Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and this topic we're going to discuss the equation of a plane. So in this topic, we will review the equation of a plane in three space. We will observe that you can easily go from an ideal vector representation of a plane to an equation of that plane. We will see an algorithm that will be taking the equation of a plane and producing an ideal vector representation of that plane. Now in secondary school, you learned that the equation of a plane was of the form ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to zero, where a, b, c, and d are all fixed real values and a point in three space x, y, z is on the plane if and only if this equation is satisfied. You may also recall that the vector n equaling the value or having the values or entries a, b, and c was a vector that was orthogonal to the plane, so perpendicular to the plane. Now we're calling this n because in mathematical parlance this vector is said to be normal to the plane, hence the, value, the uh, variable n. This is not normalized, but rather a normal vector is a vector that is perpendicular to a plane at a point. Note that given an arbitrary point in three space x, y, z, then notice that the equation of a plane is a sum of products. Well, almost a sum of products. Essentially, if you take a look, that point W, containing the entries x, y, and z, is on the plane if and only if the inner product of n and that vector W plus D is equal to zero. All right. Suppose we are given an ideal vector representation of a plane, such as this. We have that u perp is simultaneously a point on the plane while also being a vector orthogonal to the plane. Thus, if we set a, b, and c to be the entries of u perp, then it follows that the inner product of u perp and itself plus d must equal zero. After all, the coefficients a, b, and c are the entries of u perp, where at, while also u perp is a point on the plane. Therefore, this equation must be satisfied. Consequently, we can calculate the value of d. So for example, with our previous example where u perp was negative 3.84, negative 5.12, and 0. Consequently, our equation of the plane must be negative 3.84x minus 5.12 times y plus 0 times z minus the 2 norm of this vector, which is 40.96, and that's equal to 0. Now, this normally isn't how you see a plane in secondary school, and because the decimal, uh, because the decimal is uh, fixed or has a terminating decimal, we could, in this case, actually multiply by 100 and divide through by the greatest common divisor. In other words, we can simplify this to 3x plus 4y plus 32 is equal to 0. Now, how do you go from the equation of a plane to a vector representation? Well, first, we know that the vector n, the normal, is perpendicular to the plane. Consequently, u perp must be a scalar multiple of this vector. So let's call it delta times the normal vector. Consequently, it follows that the inner product of the normal vector and u perp or delta times n plus d must equal zero. 
Well, from the properties of the inner product, you know that this is essentially just delta times a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d is equal to zero, and we can solve this for delta, being negative d over a squared plus b squared plus c squared. All right, so if we have the normal vector abc, we just multiply this by this delta, and that will give us the vector u perp, that is, a line perpendicular to the plane and a point that is actually on the plane itself. All right, we now have u perp equaling delta times n, so now we must find two orthonormal vectors that are in the plane. Now we're going to prefer a programmatic approach. Previously, I used to do an algebraic solution, but this required significant intervention on the part of the person deriving the formulas. We want a programmatic approach, that is an algorithm that can simply be followed that gives us the appropriate vectors in the end. Solution. Well, we know that in R3 or three space, there are three canonical basis vectors, i, j, and k is what we generally call them. What we're going to do is we're going to find the component perpendicular to a normalized normal vector for each of these three. So v1 will be 1, 0, 0, subtract uh, having the projection onto the normalized normal being subtracted off of it. V2 is the same, but for 0, 1, 0, and V3 is the same, but for 0, 0, 1. Okay, so what we have done is we have projected each of the canonical basis vectors onto a plane parallel to the plane, but now that plane is parallel or is going through the origin and not necessarily going through u perp. Now, it may happen that one of these canonical basis vectors will be parallel or very close to be par being parallel to the, to the uh, normal vector, in which case one of them could actually be very, very small in its two norm. So if the two norm is very small or actually zero, there's a possibility for significant numerical error if we're trying to compute with it. Consequently, we will choose the two out of the three vectors that have the largest two norm. Now we will relabel these as v1 and v2. We've calculated v1 through v3. We calculate the two norm of each of them and whichever two have the largest two norm, we just relabel them as being v1 and v2. Now there's something really nice about this. Because we are excluding the one that is guaranteed or the smallest, then it is guaranteed that the two norm of both v1 and v2 after relabeling, the two norm can be no less than root two over two or 0.707. There's also another nice feature. These two vectors after the projection will still not be almost parallel. The angle between these two vectors must be between 60 and 120 degrees. So there's no real chance that they're going to be parallel. That means we don't have to worry about numeric error. So once we have these two vectors, they're not guaranteed to be orthogonal. They're not guaranteed to be normalized. However, we can apply Gram-Schmidt and that will give us two orthonormal vectors that are parallel to the plane. For example, let's find a vector representation of the plane described by this equation, 3x plus 4y minus 5z plus 6 is equal to zero. We first start by defining the normal vector, which are the coefficients 3, 4, and negative 5. 
Next, we calculate delta, which is negative d over a squared plus b squared plus c squared, and that's equal to negative 6 over 50. Consequently, that evaluates to negative 0 0.12, and thus u perp is just negative 0 0.12 times the normal vector 3, 4, negative 5, which gives us this vector negative 0 0.36, negative 0 0.48, and 0 0.6. All right, so next we will find the perpendicular component of each of the three canonical vectors with respect to the normal vector a, b, c. Now to make this simplification this calculation a little simpler, simpler, we're going to normalize the normal vector. So the normalized normal vector is root 2 times the vector 0 0.3, 0 0.4, negative 0 0.5. So therefore, v1 is 1, 0, 0 minus the projection of this onto the normal. v2 is 0, 1, 0 minus the projection onto the normalized normal, and v3 is 0, 0, 1 minus its projection onto the normalized normal. We can calculate the two norm of each of these three, and it happens by chance that v1 has the largest two norm, v2 has the second largest. So we will discard v3. However, it could have happened that v3 was the largest with a 2 norm and v1 had the smallest 2 norm, or perhaps v2. It doesn't really matter, but in this particular case, by chance, it happened that v1 had the largest 2 norm, v2 had the second largest. Thus, we will apply Gram-Schmidt to these two vectors. Consequently, we will normalize v1. So v1 normalized is approximately this vector you see here. We will then subtract from v2 the projection of v2 onto v1 cap. We'll then normalize v2. All right, so now we have an orthonormal basis for the plane. Thus, a vector representation of the plane 3x plus 4y plus minus 5z plus 6 is equal to 0 is the representation you see here. A per vector perpendicular to the plane while also being on the plane, negative 0 0.36, negative 0 0.48, 0 0.6, plus alpha times one orthonormal vector plus beta times a second orthonormal vector. Following this topic, you now understand the equation of a plane in three space. You know that we can easily go from an ideal vector representation of a plane to an equation of that plane. However, you have also seen an algorithm for taking the equation of a plane and producing an ideal vector representation of that plane. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!